Better. Jag coming to NBC Wednesday. Government can only do so much. Your doctor can only do so much. But to avoid the rising costs of health care, you have the key. That key is PCA Qualicare. PCA Qualicare is a quality health plan that covers most of the extra bills that Medicare alone doesn't cover. PCA Qualicare covers your Medicare deductibles and outpatient prescriptions. It also covers things like doctor visits, specialists, and many other charges that Medicare alone doesn't cover at no additional cost to you. Consider that if you are hospitalized, the deductible for that alone is $736. PCA Qualicare pays that and more at no additional cost to you. PCA Qualicare. It's not what the government can do. It's not what your doctor can do. It's more. It's what I can do to lower my health care costs. PCA Qualicare. Call today. You're watching WTDJ NBC6, where the news comes first. This is Channel 6 News at 6. By air, by land, and by sea, South Florida says a final farewell and pays a special tribute to four Brothers to the Rescue pilots shot down at sea. From NBC6, this is continuing coverage of remembering the victims. Good evening to you. I'm Willard Shepard. And I'm Jerry Healthman. They set out to remember the four men shot down at sea, but ended up facing high seas and some serious seasickness. A flotilla of 35 boats left Key West this morning, escorted by 11 Coast Guard cutters. They faced nine-foot seas, seas so rough, 21 boats were forced to turn back by early afternoon. Brothers to the rescue flights also remembering the four men killed last week. 14 planes held a wreath-dropping ceremony a little over an hour ago at the site about 20 miles off Cuba, where last Saturday's attack happened. You are looking now at a live picture right now of a memorial service beginning at the Orange Bowl. About 35,000 people have packed the stand in honor of the four men killed. From Miami to Key West to the Florida Straits, we have a team of reporters covering every angle of this story. NBC6 reporters Ari Odzer and Carlos Harrison are in Key West. Ari, returning only hours ago from the flotilla, Hank Tester is at the Brothers to the Rescue hangar in Opelaka, and Jose diaz Ballard is at the memorial service that's being held right now at the Orange Bowl. Ari and Carlos, let's begin with you. Well, Jerry, I'll tell you, it's been a day for setbacks and a day for statements. And even though the flotilla had to turn back at sea out there, they say that what they accomplished today was more than a memorial. It was a memorial against the odds. A flotilla battered by high winds and high seas, forced to turn back short of its goal. They made it to a point 23 miles short of where they wanted to go. Uh, that position's 43 miles from Key West, and they had a wreath-laying ceremony between 2 o'clock and 2.20, about a 20-minute ceremony that was uh, very dignified. Despite the difficulty, participants say, there was no disappointment. My disappointment would be if we had lost a life. Short of that, the sacrifice we have put forth is what's necessary. It is our duty to respect those that have passed away in an act of butchery. Preparations began before dawn. Their primary purpose, to remember four men believed killed a week ago when Cuban MiGs gunned down two unarmed Brothers to the Rescue planes nearly 20 miles north of Havana. Along the way, they stopped to pay tribute to another man who died when a boat sank during a previous flotilla. Eleven Coast Guard vessels escorted the flotilla, sent along to keep both Cuba and the exiles from sparking a confrontation that would further intensify already high Cuba-U.S. tensions. But exile organizers say this is not the end. We will not stop until our people take to the streets in Cuba and Castro surrenders his power to the people of Cuba. Well, just to give you a sense of the kind of conditions that they were facing out there, the determination that took them as far as they did, I take it, uh, Ari Anser, you were out there with them for much of the trip. What was it like out there exactly? Well, Carlos, to give you an idea, our captain told us that nobody volunteers to go out in conditions like they had out there today in the Florida Straits. Of course, this was not an ordinary pleasure trip. And the fact that the flotilla participants had to endure such harsh conditions only made their goal that much more meaningful. 
Our videotape gives you an idea of how rough the seas were today. Six to ten foot relentless waves tossed yachts around as if they were toy boats. It wasn't worth any amount of money to me to go on. And it, it wasn't uh, safe any longer. But fueled by emotion, the boats in the flotilla slogged on through, disregarding the danger, making one stop along the way. This is the spot where the sundowner two went down in the last flotilla. One man lost his life here. They're laying wreaths here to commemorate that loss as well. At about 43 miles out, in international waters, they honored the four flyers shot down last week. There were very rough seas there. We had a ceremony. It was very emotional. Uh, we also made a statement that the waters are not just Castro's waters, they are international waters. The captain of our 40-foot fishing boat decided to turn back, telling us his boat couldn't take the pounding anymore. We had gone only 19 miles in more than three hours. The boats that made it all day, at least as far as to the last wreath ceremony, were out on the water more than 10 hours, and they still came 27 miles short of the actual point where those planes were shot down. It's ironic, after the week full of uh, talk about what might happen violence-wise, considering what Fidel Castro's forces might do, that Castro had nothing to do with them not reaching their final goal, simply high seas. It didn't make the ceremony, though, any less poignant. Live in Key West, our Riyadh's or NBC6. All right, before you move on tonight, uh, you were out there with them. Obviously, uh, there must have been some disappointment when they realized that they did have to turn around and come back. I think it was just a prudent decision, Willard. Everyone realized at that point that if they had kept going, they would have run into fuel problems with getting back. The seas were so heavy that you use a lot more fuel that way. They were also worried about having to come back in darkness. So they figured, let's do it here in international waters, make the same point, and honor the four guys who died last week. Okay, thank you, Ari. Reporting live tonight from Key West. Time now to turn it over to NBC6 reporter Hank Tester, who's live up in Okalaka, where the last of the Brothers of the Rescue pilots should be returning from their flyover at the Orange Bowl any moment now. Hank? I can tell you that Carlos Tabanina just flew over us just a second ago, dipping his wings. He's making a landing, final approach here at Opelaka. But today, early on, it looked like it was going to be a washout. There was a big delay, but the memorial flight got into the air. Here's the story. The weather threatened to do what the U.S. government and the Castro regime really did not want to happen. But onward it went, the Brothers to the Rescue Memorial to four dead volunteer pilots blown out of the sky by Cuban MiG fighters. Rain and wind did not stop Brothers to the Rescue leader Jose Basulto. He praised the young men. Remember them and dream and live and struggle as they did. For in this manner, their example shall not die. Only after U.S. State Department and administration officials realized Basulto was going to fly over the shoot-down site no matter what, did the government agree to provide air and sea cover for the memorial flight into international waters off Cuba. The send-off was emotional. A priest to provide a non-denominational service from the air. Hundreds gathered to cheer the pilots on. Jose Basulto, despite intense pressure, is just about to take off, leading his brothers to the rescue to the Straits of Florida. 22 planes in all took off, some returned due to bad weather. Hundreds came to pay their respects and give support. I feel that have to be the end for Fidel Castro. I think we all need to get together once and for all and support our the Cuban community here and our brothers in Cuba. As you can see in this video that uh, we just got back, Brothers to Rescue flight over, over that side, dropping the uh, wreaths, the memorial to the four downed pilots. Now back live here, we expect Jose Basulto to land here in just a couple of minutes. They made that flyover of the Orange Bowl as they promised, and we, of course, will be talking to him about his flight and what it meant to him. So we're standing by live at Opalaka Airport. I'm Hank Tester, NBC6. Hank, while you're waiting for that, obviously they had bad weather today as well, but uh, I got the impression from looking at your piece there that they felt like they accomplished their mission today. Yeah, they certainly did, and uh, they're quite excited over there in the hangar that uh, they've been able to pull this off, but there was worry early on about the weather. And as we told you, several planes did turn around and come back because it, it got uh, very wet out there, and they ran into some serious winds. But uh, Basulto and the uh, Brothers of the Rescue pushed on to the site. 
Okay, Hank Tester in Opelika, thanks very much. Well, the outpouring of sorrow is being seen in so many ways all over South Florida tonight. That's right. The group Vigilia Mambisa wanted to play a part, but their boats are too small to make the journey, so they organized a symbolic flotilla today in Coconut Grove. They conducted their own memorial tribute by throwing flowers and flags into the sea. Many local Cuban businesses are closed tonight, or they will be closing very shortly. The owners of Sedanos and Navarros say they're shutting their doors from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock tonight in memory of the fallen pilots. Another sign of the emotion, flags across South Florida are at half-staff as a tribute to the brothers' pilots. By a city proclamation, today is an official day of mourning in Miami. Well, right now, a special memorial service is being held at the Orange Bowl for mourners who couldn't make it out on the flotilla today. 35,000 people are in attendance tonight, including the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Madeleine Albright. Also in the crowd this evening, NBC6 anchor Jose diaz Balart. Jose, what is the mood out there tonight? Well, right now, the U.S. National Anthem is being played. I want you to pan over and see the thousands of people that are here at the Orange Bowl right now. There are people from all over the world. Gloria Stefan, not a star today, just one of the many who have come here to pay their respects for the dead. And behind me, the Vietnamese community of South Florida. You will see flags from all over the world here, among the many Cuban and American flags. And I want to show you a cross-section of some of the people who came here today. Your name? Mariana Dominguez. Why did you come today? I'm from Colombia, but we're all enduring this pain together. When is enough, if not now? Okay, then what's your name? Ma Manuel Cambo. Why, why are you here today? I'm here today because I want all the Americans from this moment on to enjoy and realize that the biggest enemy of the United States is Fidel Castro. What is your name? Andy Perez. And why are you here today, Andy? I'm here to support the protests against a tyrant that is killing an important people, the Cuban people. And Okay, and, and very quickly, what is your name and why are you here? Robert Riley. I'm here, basically, with my school, Belen Jesuit Preparatory, to protest the killing of three U.S. American citizens and one U.S. American resident. Thank you very much. We're going to go to a tape now, the flyover of Brothers to the Rescue. The airplanes flew over the Orange Bowl moments ago, and it was a very emotional moment, a lot of tears being shed. And I'm going to get you a wide shot of the Orange Bowl for you to get an idea of just how packed it is. Even under bad weather conditions, people came out and said it is our turn to pay respects for the dead. From the Orange Bowl, Jose diaz Ballard, NBC6, back to you. Before this service began, the huge crowd stirred when they spotted the families of the four downed flyers entering the Orange Bowl. Oh, I'm just, oh, I'm just so emotional at this moment. I cannot imagine. I know that this is, this is incredible. I know that the stadium is just going to be packed today. And we hope that it means that Cubans are getting together and that we'll be united and that it will last forever and not just for today. This huge turnout also includes everyone from Dade County commissioners like Maurice Ferre to Congress people like Republicans Lincoln diaz Balart and Eliana ross Leitonen, and also global celebrities like Gloria Estefan. Well, I was part of the Cuban-American free community to obviously offer our condolences and pray for these four young men that gave their lives for a very important cause and to be one with our community. We wouldn't miss this. And we are back live now, but we wanted to show you pictures as well of United States Ambassador to the UN, Madeleine Albright. She arrived about a half hour ago to a huge cheer from this crowd. Of course, she was one of the loudest voices this week in denouncing the shootdown of those two brothers to the rescue planes last Saturday. Now, everything but the upper tier of the Orange Bowl is completely filled this afternoon. There was an estimate that perhaps 30 to 40,000 people would show up here, but it looks like it may have exceeded even organizers' expectations. Certainly a packed Orange Bowl at this hour. And according to the itinerary we have, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Madeleine Albright, will be speaking in just a very few moments. She is going to be introduced in just a few moments and indeed is being introduced right now. Willard and Jerry. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, while you're out there and while we're waiting for her, of course, uh, Michael, if you can still hear me, Ms. Albright, as you had discussed there, uh, released the transcripts of the conversations between the MiG pilots and uh, was very, very upset about that. Have you had a chance to talk to any of her people and the emotion that she may uh, want to display today to the crowd out there at the Orange Bowl, Michael? Earlier this week, she had 
expressed her disgust over what she thought was the callous attitude those pilots had. Right now, you see people cheering the UN ambassador, the United States UN ambassador to the United Nations, Madeleine Albright, as she takes the podium here to thunderous applause from the many thousands who have gathered here at the Orange Bowl. Again, she's somewhat of a hero this week, given her outspoken words after the shoot down of those planes and her pivotal role in helping push along sanctions and condemnation of the action by Cuba last Saturday over the Florida Straits. So as the cheers die down, we will now listen to Madeleine Albright. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of President Clinton and the First Lady and my own family, I offer my condolences, my prayers, and my support to the martyrs of February 24th, to their families, and to their many, many friends. Bishop Roman and the other clergy here are offering comfort to the spirit and the soul, to which I cannot add, though as a mother and grandmother, I wish I had words that would comfort further still. Last Saturday, Pablo Morales Carlos Costa, Mario de la Peña, and Armando Alejandre became part of... <laughs> became part of the hallowed list of Americans killed because they loved freedom and because they cared for their fellow human beings. <laughs> we who are gathered here and in living rooms and kitchens throughout this city, throughout this country, share this de desire to bring those four men back to see their fragile aircraft circling this stadium, to watch as they are reunited with their families. our desire, but it is beyond our power to transform that dream into flesh and blood. It is within our power to be sure that the world does not misunderstand what happened off the coast of Florida. What happened off the coast of Florida in international airspace seven days ago? So of this you may be sure. When the government of Fidel Castro tries to shift the blame for this tragedy to the victims of it, 
America will tell the truth. When the government of Fidel Castro tries, as it has, to deny that what it did was murder, America will tell the truth. When the government of Fidel Castro tries, as it has, to twist and distort the rules by which all civilized people must live, America will tell the truth. And it is because we have told the truth that Castro has been tried and convicted in the court of world opinion for his outrageous and brutal crime. There is anguish in our hearts this afternoon, but let us not allow that anguish to harden our hearts. America will protect its citizens in international waters and international skies. We will tighten sanctions against the government of Cuba, but without harming the people we want to help. We will employ every diplomatic strategy we can devise to encourage a transition to democracy in Cuba. <laughs> but we will deny to Castro the satisfaction of driving us to lawlessness or violence. When I was a little Czechoslovak girl, I watched in fear as communists loyal to Joseph Stalin seized control of Czechoslovakia and drove my family from its home. When I was a young woman, I watched in horror as Soviet tanks crushed the democratic uprising known as the Prague Spring. When I was an older woman, I watched in pride as former political prisoner and dissident Václav Havel was sworn in as president. Madeleine Albright speaking to a very sympathetic crowd today, explaining about her youth and her experiences with Stalinism and communism in Czechoslovakia. As you see, this place is packed. There are flags from all over the world. As I said, the Vietnamese community from South Florida is here. Every single Latin American country, people from as far back as New Zealand have come here today to express their solidarity with the four people shot out of the sky. Let us now go back to NBC6 Studios. That's the very latest from the Orange Bowl. Okay, thank you, Jose. An emotional day out there. Absolutely, and we have much more to come. Apparently, we're hearing that Jose Basolto just landed at the Brothers to the Rescue hangar in Opalaca. We're going to go there live when we come right back. Take hundreds of thousands of dollars and two simply fascinating hosts, mix in some eager and exciting fans, and what have you got? Flamingo Fortune. It's the hot new TV game show from the Florida Lottery. Watch players from all over the state battle for big bucks and find out how you can win too. Flamingo Fortune, Saturday at 7, only on NBC6, your official lottery station. Channel 6 News at 6 is brought to you in part by your South Florida Ford dealers.
Why is the Dodge Grand Caravan feeling so squeezed? Because the Ford Windstar has more horsepower, a smoother ride, standard rear air, more safety features, and it's priced $1,700 less than the Caravan. In addition, whether you buy or lease, you get $1,000 cash back or 4.8% financing for up to four years. So you save $2,700 when you compare. Save $2,700 or get 4.8% financing. See your South Florida Ford dealer and drive a winner. Maybe it was fate or our sweet children. No way, Jose! Or that truck that almost hit me came this close. But for some reason, I pulled off and there was a KFC. And they have this whole new menu. Oh, for you. I was surprised. New Colonel's I... Crispy Strips and Chunky Chicken Pot Pie made fresh all day. You got all this at KFC? If you haven't been to KFC lately, you don't know what you're missing. I may never have to cook again. Now get a Colonel's Crispy Strips or Chunky Chicken Pot Pie combo meal, just $3.99. At Shoma Homes, we build homes so you can build yourself a dream. When you look into Shoma Homes in Tamiami, you may see something you didn't expect yourself. Building the kind of lifestyle you've always wanted. With Shoma Homes, everything is included with all the quality, comfort, and charm your family deserves. Come see for yourself at our grand opening, Shoma Homes in Tamiami. At Shoma Homes, we build homes so you can build yourself a dream. Mark's not gonna like this. Oh, don't worry about Mark. Just keep turning that thing in there. Cox, what yeah. are you doing? I, I'm teaching the salesman how to sell cars like other dealers do. This is Kendall Toyota. We don't do it like that. We do it like this. It's one price, best price. For sale, $89.95. Corolla, $10,995. Camrys, $13,995. Pickups, $99.95. One price selling only at the world's largest Toyota dealer. I hope you learned the lesson. You mean not to do like other dealers? <laughs> exactly. Kendall Toyota. Mm. Well, the seagoing brothers to the rescue may have been forced back by high waves, but airborne members of the group made the memorial trip anyway. That's right. They just flew over the Orange Bowl, and now we are being told that they have just returned to their hangar at Opelok Airport. That's where NBC6 reporter Hank Tester is tonight. Hank? Well, he just arrived, Jose Basilto, about, oh, 10 minutes ago. As you can see right behind me, he's talking to Spanish-language media. Basically, his message was earlier on that uh, the nonviolent uh, actions of Brothers to the Rescue will continue. This was a fitting memorial to the four downed pilots that the operation went well. And again, uh, to remember the pilots, to remember the pilots, to keep their memory alive, that Brothers to the Rescue will continue the civil disobedience and uh, they will be able to uh, continue to do a, a, um, a non-violent act whenever it is appropriate to remember the downed pilots. Once again, uh, uh, Jose Basolto back and amongst the brothers to the rescue. Reporting live, I'm Hank Tester, NBC6, back to you. All right, Hank, thanks very much. And of course, we'll hear from Jose Basolto at 11 o'clock. That's right, as we've been telling you, uh, bad weather, and as many of you know, uh, came into the area today. The flotilla and the planes had a lot of trouble. Maria Gennaro joins us now with today's uh, forecast. Maria. That's right, Willard and Jerry. Well, the good news is it's all over for right now. Take a look at the latest in radar. We'll put it in motion for you so you can see how all the showers and thunderstorms are moving off. We will still have clouds over us throughout the rest of this evening, and tomorrow, still a little shaky. We'll see some morning showers, and then later on in the afternoon, we should have variable clouds, and then we continue to warm up and also clear out from there on out. So take a look at the forecast right now. For boaters tomorrow, still small craft advisory in effect. Winds out of the northeast at 15 to 20. Seas four to six feet, and the surf right now is at 71 degrees. Then for tonight, we're looking for uh, mostly cloudy skies, very cool. Temperatures dropping down into about the mid to upper 50s. And for tomorrow, it looks as though we'll have a high of only about 71 degrees. Morning showers possible, clearing out later on in the afternoon. Back to you, Bullard and Jerry. Okay, thank you, Maria. Well, the weather also messed up a day at the races. When we come back, we're going to go live to Homestead and Craig Minervini. We're going to take Craig right now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third round, a very wet round, cloudy day here at the Doral Open. We'll get to the golf in just a minute. First of all, though, the business concerning Dolphins quarterback Troy Vincent. Could it be ex-quarterback Troy Vincent? Reports today out of both Philadelphia and Miami that Vincent leading the Dolphins for Philly. Miami stated it could not match the Eagles' five-year $16.5 million offer sheet for Vincent. His agent says it was Troy's decision to leave the deadline for Miami is tonight at midnight, but all indications are that's it. Vincent will be out of here. As for the golf here at Doral today, the rain delay 
for about an hour and 20 minutes, and that means there'll be some unfinished business when they finish up the final round tomorrow. They just finished up moments ago. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from today's action. Can you top this was the story on the front nine. Four different players had a piece of the lead. Michael Bradley here, the chip on four, takes the lead at minus 10. VJ Singh, the par five eighth hole, gets on in two, and take a look at this. An eagle putt, he grabs a one-shot lead at minus 12. Right on his tail, the shark, the two-time Doral winner, Greg Norman, birdied five, seven, eight, and nine here to tie for the lead at minus 12. So Joe Ozaki also is one shot back. All right, the rain even more devastating for the Grand Prix racers today. Let's go down to Homestead and show you what we're talking about down there. They were hoping to get in qualifying for the pole position and the rest of the slotting, but the Indy cars never got on track to qualify tomorrow. From 10 to 11.30, the race will start at 1.45. That's it from the third round of Doral. Singh and Norman on top. They'll play about four more holes tomorrow. Back to you. Okay, okay. thank you, Craig. Well, that's it for us tonight at 6 o'clock. Thanks for watching. And we'll have a complete wrap-up of all the day's events uh, at 11 o'clock. For now, the NBC Nightly News is next, and we hope to see you at 11 right after the live Lotto.